Welcome back to the For the State Militia Actual Play. The team comes up with the best plan possible to rob the Snohomish smugglers of their prized drug precursors. Kennel shows that his knowledge of sheep herding is perhaps uncomfortably detailed. Improv displays mastery of the demolitions table and run and gun. Juliet gets volunteered to deliver some explodey surprises. And Horatio refuses to use red wires as currency. It's time to begin episode 32. If we're going to dose people, why don't we just get 7-7? Seven, seven? So, I mean, if you have the rig, it's certainly possible for us to just crash this place, right? Does the, uh, the, the, the big vehicle, the GMC, does it have a rigor adaptation on it? No. Well, it's, it's availability four. I'm sure we can find one of those. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. I mean, the fence is not going to pose much of a threat to that, right? No. Well, the issue would be getting it out there. Because one, with the amount of armor it has on it, the thing is going to be obvious as balls that, it's, that it doesn't belong outside of the Barrens. Oh, okay. Two, all of the guns are illegal. Okay, then, never mind. And the mounts are illegal. Fair. All right, so what do you guys wish to do? Do you wait another day before you go, or what? Uh... We, we don't really have a super plan. Basically, we were going to wait until the truck with the trailer left, under the assumption that some of their most skilled shooters would be on the truck if it is doing a drug delivery. Uh, give that about a day, and then we just basically kick in the door, kill everybody that we have to, and then steal all the stuff plus the goats and the chickens. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, seems fair. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think we that were going seems to... like the kind of plan gangers would come <laughs> up with. Well, we we were thinking we we're going to sneak in where the goats are, and these are the fainting yeah. goats. So here, I have an idea. Okay, so so fainting goats were originally used as a way to protect a herd. We're talking old ancient England. So what you do is you would you would mix the fainting goats in with you with your with your good herd of like sheep or something, so that should a wolf or a lion or a something attack. Those won't really worth anything. They're not good for the meat. They're not good for the wool or anything, or for their uh, the hide. So they would fall whenever an animal came into attack, and thus all the good sheep and all the good goats would be able to escape. So it was basically, it was a, a throw us, like why you, you always go camping with your slower friend in case a bear attacks, you know, the bear gets them. So what if they're using these fainting goats as like a security system? Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. Maybe like the goats start falling over, somebody notices this, and then they realize something's going on. What if we buy a few doses of guts and we dose the goats with guts so they're no longer afraid and they don't faint? <laughs> I mean, that seems like the kind of thing gangers would come up with. Seems seems accurate, man. Right? Well, if we're gonna <laughs> if we're gonna dose people, why don't we just get seven seven? And then, like, coat this whole place with 7-7, seven, seven, and then they're all dead. I'm not averse to that idea. But can we even get our hands on it? Oh, well, Juliet can make it, right? Right? Well, right? Uh, you mean the sledge? Well, no, you, yeah, you know improv. all the people. Well, yeah, but you know all them people that, that are into, like, you know, poison in the trenches or something, aren't you? Uh, I do guns. Can I guns? She strokes a pistol at her side. Wait, hey, I got an idea. Yes. What? Wait, what if we talk to the doc that we all know, and uh, we get some of that that like sleeping gas that he uses when he does like all like the cyber surgery? How he's got to put you out. And what if we just pump a building full of the sleeping gas? All these fraggers gonna be asleep, and then we just walk in and take what we want. I mean, I'll be honest. I I I think we just go in as far as we go, and when they see us, we shoot them and take the shit. Yo, know, that's that's <laughs> that's a pretty good plan too. Uh, like. <laughs> Keep it simple, right? Well, is there anywhere strategically to use bombs? Yo, I was I was thinking about that too, yo. What if okay, you know, Juliet's pretty good at being sneaky. What if she carries a bomb to like each of like like the front door of every building? So if they try to open the door to come out, it explodes and it kills them all. How large was this office building? Not very big. Like I'd say it's an office building, but have you ever seen like construction sites where they have that two tier office? Oh, thing that they okay. keep on site. It's like that. So, I mean, yeah, I can make a bomb. Just toss it. That will just blow the whole thing up. Fuck it. <laughs> right? How much, how much, uh, 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 what's your body plus strength, Kennel? Oh, Jesus. Uh, body seven, strength eight. So how many kilos can you lift? Uh, shitload. How many kilos can you throw? 
that's gonna be up to GM. I mean, this might be a good place to use some dogs with, with bombs on them. <laughs> I mean, I was literally just I was literally just gonna make a big ball of info, and he just tosses it at that thing. Yeah, like... I like blowing that up because if the um, if the RCC is there, right? That as well as me. whoever's operating it. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to fight a rigger. Let's see if I remember right. For lift and carry, it's what fifteen kilos per point of strength. So that's one hundred and twenty kilos, just that I can just flat out carry. Well, sure, but there's going to be a difference in what you can lift and what you can throw. And we'll say we'll say one tenth of that you can throw. So a, a twelve kilo bomb I could throw. Could Jesus, improv huge. spike an RCC? Yes. Oh no, I can definitely try to hit it. The thing is, in order to kill it, I'd have to I'd have to brute force it because I need marks on it to theoretically do it. I'm fine doing that. I can fight in the host. Uh, that's not a problem. I'll probably be strapped to Kennel's back because because I'm going to have to be unconscious. Uh, but that's the, fine. The, the Chewbacca C-3PO and Cloud City attack. I like yeah. it. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But at the same time, if there's other people in that office thing, we can take them at the same time. The thing is, I don't think a 12 kilo anfo is going to do it. Well, actually, wait. What is this thing? What are the walls of this thing? Like, like, like corrugated metal kind of deal? From what you can tell, yes. Okay, fuck it. 12 kilo anfo will do a pretty good job. Let me look at the thing here. And I'm getting real, real comfortable with this run and gun table. I'm just saying. I'm glad you are, because I still can't make heads or tails of it. <laughs> so just going I'm, by the I'm math, just having to use it, it so much. Just because it, it, it works off of square roots, uh, we could do nine kilo and just throw multiple ones. Or um, I was thinking, since Juliet is actually very good at sneaking, if Juliet's amenable to it, give her a backpack full of these things, and she can place them, I don't know, like like every 15 yards along the outer wall of the office. So that when you trip them, you know, say, say we put six there total, uh, you know, one at each corner or, you know, a third of the way in and just literally have a shockwave fold this place in half. Because we often we think about, like, let's make the biggest bomb possible. But since it's an omnidirectional explosion, what if instead we just make multiple small ones and just take out the entire foundation? So the upstairs becomes the downstairs. Remember, if I'm using Anfo, the effective rating is going to change. Uh -huh. And then we have the modified effective rating times the square root yeah so i mean if if we have six and i on, on average look at that up to like nine or ten we have 12 kilos we're going to be starting at like 40 p jesus that's that's a floor of an office building and, and then you can always tamp it Ooh. well no and, well no no and that's 40 p before the multiplied by the square root remember right again you can always tamp the thing too that's true yeah i just make one nice big bomb and just toss that. So you said he could toss 15 kilos? 12, I think. Yeah, 12. Said. Yeah, I said one-tenth of what you can lift and carry. Okay. Um. Can you be on, like, can can you take, like, some nitro? Whoa. That's some that's some hardcore stuff right there. Like, what if I get hooked and I start eating the furniture? Can I get a DNA sample from him and make him designer, <laughs> designer nitro in the drug lab? One dose of it? You would have to buy the precursors, but yeah. Because why not? <laughs> so give me a DNA sample. I'll make designer. I'll make designer nitro. You you want me to do what to a cup? Oh, so you shit. can make me drugs? No no. Okay, so we're so so we're not gonna do this this time. But I am going to make uh, a custom drug that is designed to do nothing but maximize your strength as much as possible. <laughs> and then you're gonna toss explosives. Oh, that's, that's going to be fun when I turn into the Strength 12 troll. Yeah, I won't be a target then. I mean, it also gives you a high pain tolerance 6, so when people shoot you, it's not going to help them very much. You won't even feel the bullet rupturing your spleen. You are going to pass out when it's done, though. I'm going to be real honest about that. <laughs> that wouldn't be the, the first time. The other alternative is you can just take some Ripper, mm. get that extra strength. Because that would uh, that that would put you up to thirteen kilos, right? I'm I'm literally going through all the drugs right now to see if anything else gives you a bonus to strength. Uh, Kami. Kami. I kind of like the idea of Julia dropping it off uh, to start things off. Yeah, if you can tamp it, sure. Then we'll have that nice distraction when we drive through the front gate. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. So, Julia, how much can you carry? Jesus Christ! I'm sorry. I just uh, I had completely uh, forgotten that Kamikaze was physiological only. Yeah, I'll I'll take that yeah. stuff all day long. Her current strength is ten. So what does that come out to in terms of carry? 150 kilos. She's a yeah. beefy troll <laughs> or beefy uh, dwarf. 
<laughs> yeah, if if we give you 150 kilos of info, this place is going to stop existing. So we're going to not do that because that is way too much info. Holy shit, that's gonna exp that's gonna destroy literally everything. <laughs> that's that's real bad. Would you say that it would require tests to get precursors for info? You already have info. Um, oh wait, yeah, precursors. Be, um, it says the precursors are availability five. Uh, I'm not gonna make a roll for that. We'll just it's not a big deal. Okay, you know what, guys? We need to explicitly get an explosive supplier. Okay, we need that real bad. Uh, you could probably get it from your fence. All right. Hey, hey, I need I need like a hundred kilos of fertilizer. Okay. Don't ask questions. Well, we we are hitting a farm. I mean, if we kill everybody here, we'll what's to stop us from taking all their fertilizer? Yeah, yeah. Jack all the fertilizer. Solid, yeah. Take all of their chicken litter. It works. I, I ain't too proud to scoop up chicken litter if it means making bombs. Yeah. Can the face do that? Because I don't have the contact on my sheet. I fucked up. Uh, the fence has to go through Juliet. Oh, okay. Hey, mm. Juliet. Um, yeah. um, so... So, so if you're going to sneak up there and blow it up and kill everybody inside real dead, I need you to find me stuff for bombs. I'll make bombs. They'll be fine. It won't explode when you carry it. Don't worry. Also, you can find ball bearings. That'd be great. Is this really worth it? Do I have to do this? She's talking to Kendall at this that point. Well, I mean, if, if we blow up that place, that's where all their shooters is at. I mean, do you want to get shot or you just want to have them go boom? I'll take a boom. I better need a good backpack. I am not letting this stuff drop. Oh, uh, it's not, it's not shock sensitive. Just don't get a wet. <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking we're going to bring, want to bring either some Prolochats or some of our guys, just so we can load the truck faster. Oh shit. Yeah. We can bring our guys. Right. Yeah. This is not ET. And once we've secured this place, uh, we're doing it as loud. So we should assume HTR from the moment that bomb goes off. Right. Yeah. That, that is the one, the one question if we do a bomb that large we are going to get a lot of attention and so we need to be in and out probably five minutes uh, what security zone was this again c zone um, oh, okay it was cat cart okay that's fine and since i'll be using them anyway if i'm willing to spring for like you know a couple of proletariats for myself if we each contribute buy a half a dozen for the for the group bring some of our guys with us that way we can load it faster and then be in and out a little quicker. Well, I did. I bought one proletariat for the uh, for the treehouse for working in all the uh, facilities to help out improv with repairs and and all that stuff. They're only what three or four thousand, but I are they are they strong enough to really help? Now the other option, I'll be real honest here, is we is we spend five grand each, and we buy one of the MCT drones. Oh, oh. I don't have five grand anymore. Oh, sorry, R man. Right. Well, I mean, oh, well, I mean, the, I'll pay for some more the, of it, but the yeah. Kenchiko Kikai's. Yeah, the one that is specifically a giant fucking carrier loader drone, specifically designed to do that job. <laughs> the the problem Not with that is delivery it. time, because it's oh, twenty grand, right, so yeah. that's a week. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now there so, uh, there is the Ares Mule, which is the uh, the big loading drone. It's it's like the the Walker drone, that just it's like yeah. a walking shelf. It, it does have the drone arm built onto it. So it can help load. Actually, one of those would be pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so so we bring that. We bring a proletarian that you already have, and we bring some of our guys. Right? That'll do it. Uh, Mr. Jim, the Ares Mule is availability 4 and 8,000 million. Would you like me to roll to get that, or is that just a, I can buy one? Buy it. All right. Now, this is a two-day delivery time, guys. So we're going to have to delay for two days. If you make an availability test, it can, it, it can be faster. We can do that, too. If it's versus 4, I'm pretty sure you're going to win that test. Let me see what my dice are. A negotiation. And Mr. GM, since I'll be doing this face-to-face, -face, can I apply first impression and or my tailored pheromones? Both, yes. All right. Four hits. So much less than half time. A day, all right. And then what truck do we want to use? Uh, Obviously, we can't use the big armored one. We can use mine. Mine has a winch, so I could pull like a uh, like a U-Haul or something behind it. Okay. So what vehicles do we have? Remind me, we have two gophers, right? Yes, we have we have Horatio's gopher, which is the really really nice one, with the uh, the cool camo paint on it, and we have. Oh a... no no no! Oh no, that's right. It was... I have upgraded that considerably with my funds, Ooh. and it is very souped up now. 
well, we and we have I think two beat up gophers. Okay, I think I think uh, maybe when we get some more money, we're gonna want to build like a loot van, right? Like one that's only supposed to carry um sh uh, shit that we're jacking, <laughs> so, so so we can carry a lot of it. Well, if we bring in like a pallet, right? My truck has a winch. Okay. It can it can probably pull like a pallet or a U-Haul behind it. Okay. That seems fair. All right. Uh, Mr. GM, were there any other vehicle trailers on the property that we spotted? There were a few other gophers and everything, yes, but none of them that were souped up like that one was. No, I mean just specifically a trailer, just a pull-behind trailer. Yes. Again, not nearly as nice. Like, instead of like being like the cover, it's the more like open bat, like where you actually have to tie everything down. But That's fine. Yeah, they're there. Now, the, the, this still begs the question, are we going to, how are we going to get this across the border? And because it sounds, be... it sounds more like we're just going to do a drive across the border, go there do the thing and then bring it back. So we won't have to do like the decoy septic pumping truck. Yeah. Well, so that's, so that's going to be the, the uh, smuggler stuff you guys knew to a passageway across, right? We can bribe somebody if we have to, you know, someone who knows the route. Yeah. What I knew was more of a jump. It wasn't like a, I mean, it works. I can do it. You don't need to worry about that. Now, how are we going to get our, uh, our, the red wires across our gangers? Okay. That's an issue. It's Cause I have the extended seating, but we're not going to fit like five extra dudes in there. I mean, they can strap themselves in to the bottom of the truck bed, right? Uh, Mr. GM, can we send just like a group, like text message to, to all of our, our gang members of who here can get across the border to Snohomish and back. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't be too big of an issue. Okay, so I, I think... mean, that's what they're telling us. Who knows how true that is? <laughs> well, that's why. No, it wouldn't, be too big of an, it wouldn't be big of an issue to send one. Yeah, I, I would. what I would like to do is compose a message that basically says, high-profile work ahead. We need some, some hardcore players that can safely get them, safely and reliably get themselves across the border and back through Snohomish. So trying trying to imply not this isn't a time for bravado. This is only for people who actually think they can do it. Uh, you get one person who says he will try. Who just has to tell him what he needs to do. I don't sound too good if we can only get one of them across. I mean, most of them do, don't have sins. So, you know. All right. So, so you know, we're going to have to invest in some proletarians and then just trust in the proletarians and yourself and Juliet being real strong. We're just going to have to do that. Another thing you guys could always do is potentially try to hire a coyote. You know, I, that could be something that Cocoa Puff could hook us up with. He is an info broker. Do we want to try that angle? Sure. Okay, I will uh, I will call up uh, Cocoa Puff. Yo, dog, how's it going? My man is good, but uh, you know, I hate to cut this to the quick, but we're kind of in a bind right now. All right, what's your name, man? Uh, maybe, you know, we was, uh, you know, me and my crew, we were... Uh, we were watching this trid show, see, about these people that was about to pull a job, see? Except the problem is they had to get somewhere up north and back with a large d amount of stuff. And they wasn't sure if that anybody knew about, oh, what are they called? Foxes or uh, weasels or wolves. You know, like one of those animals that was good about getting things across the border and back without being detected. We were trying to remember, what was the name of the... Do you, do you know the name of the character in that, in that trid? You know the one I'm talking about, right? A mongoose? No, man, it wasn't no Chinese thing. A, a, a coyote, man. Uh, like you know anybody that can that can jump the border of Snohomish oh. and back without us getting caught? Oh yeah, dog. I, I, well, he may be dead. Uh, give me a minute. I. Could you make me a roll for him? Double connection plus loyalty. Yep. And you could always try to look for yourself as well. Yeah, but Cocoa Puff's got me hooked up with four hits. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. You hear him come back? Oh yeah, dog. Yeah, um, got got a got a buddy named uh, Charlie. Yeah, we have to call him a buddy, but you know, he, he ain't your normal your, your normal type player or anything. But uh, he'll get you across and he'll get you back over. Just just don't bring heat. Y yeah, about. I mean, he, is he going to have a uh, storage space for something that would fit in like I don't know, like a trailer or so, like something. Something big, because we, you know what? I'll just, I'll just talk to him. You want to send me his code? Or you want to, you want to have him call me? How you want to do this? Hold on. <laughs> he goes away for a second. Because like, um, no, uh, 
He'll just meet you there. If you want it, you can ask him. Just show up whenever you need to go. All right, man. I, I owe you big for this. Boy, you took care of my mama. You don't owe me nothing. Peace out, player. I'll be seeing you real soon. Yep. He hangs up. And I will still send him 500 new yen, because that's the kind of guy I am. No, you're a sweetie. And I will um, pass the information that I got onto the team. So you guys have Charlie, who could potentially help you. Is there anyone, is there anything else you want to do before we get going? No, I mean, that sounds good. I mean, so we can, so we can take the vehicle ourselves, and then he can deal with our crew, right? That's kind of our idea. Yeah, I was thinking mainly to get the uh, whatever we steal, uh, getting that back across the border is is yeah. the way I was looking at that mainly. Oh, I see. Okay, so we can drop off all the shit with him. Okay. Yeah, all so right. basically he would he would pick up our our gangers that we want to bring with us. Like we do we do us as as like alpha team. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. Bravo team goes through, pick up all the shit and gets back through to get that to the treehouse and then we still, you know, alpha team our way through it. Okay, that's fine. Let me make a demolitions roll to see how good that bomb I make is. I'm going to make a 20 kilo bomb. I'm going to use my nice spider drone to help me out. Holy shit. It should have just done it itself. Uh, <laughs> all right, then. Uh, damn, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, now let's make this check. What's the thing's pilot? Four. It has a nice pilot. Jeez. And I have it hooked up to an RCC with uh, with the uh, Autosoft. Oh, this is the, uh, the microweave? Yeah, yeah. Those, those, God, those things are amazing. Yeah, I just I just bought auto sauce for all the four things, so it's gonna be my little my little drone helper. Oh boy, uh, this is a bomb. I just want you guys to know that. Yeah, <laughs> it's one heck of a bomb. Oh my, we're oh god, were we gonna terrorism every job? <laughs> I think Pretty we are. much. We're gonna yeah. terrorism now, every job. Yeah. To be fair, it's only a twenty kilo bomb. It's not like this thing is. Oklahoma City level. That was that was like that was like thousands of kilos. Well, right? and there there's going to be jobs where we won't have this option. Yeah. You know, if like if we were hitting a building downtown, most buildings downtown have the steps, right? So you can't drive a truck up to it. So once we get more established, like this won't be an option. Okay. However, it'll be super useful in going through doors. I mean, you guys are also gangers. It's not like you're full blown shadow runners. <laughs> Very true. The, the, this is the crap that gang members do. There's a reason why everyone in the sixth world hates gangers. <laughs> Except for other gangers. It's this crap that you guys are doing. This this is why I'm having so much fun with this game, because you guys are acting like like freaking gang members yeah. and it's amazing. Yeah. It's All right, fantastic. So, so the bomb's about fifty P, roughly. Dear Give or take. God, that is, and that's that's just in its free form. Drop it on the ground. Yeah. Now, if you treat this thing as a as as an object to be destroyed, it'll get double that. But that's a bit wonky. So that'll be up to UGM. But in its base form, it's about fifty p, just under a little bit. I mean, that would knock a bunker down. So. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's mostly going to going to be like how you guys have it set up. So, okay, do you guys want to go ahead and go meet Charlie? I just wanted to ask real quick, Mr. GM, would it be possible to pick up one rank of demolitions from uh, all this work with improv and just being around her? And Do you have the karma? I do have the karma. Then yeah. Okay, then I will buy one rank of demolitions. I mean, that's assuming improv doesn't mind teaching you. Uh, I don't have any instruction. I, well, thinking... she has been. Well, 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 I mean, like, just, just showing you how this sort of stuff works. Like, you don't it... necessarily have to have instruction, but, like, just talking him through it, showing him what you're doing. Oh, she's talked yeah. a lot about it. I mean, I'm remembering the times where it was That's like, true. oh, God, don't step on those wires or we'll all explode. And so, you know, learning how detonators work and, and why we tamp and, and along those lines. That's what I'm saying. Just a single rank is what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like as long as, like, improv would in mind, like, you watching what she's doing or her sure. telling you what she's doing, yeah, I have no problem with it. If you want to start, like, getting the technical stuff, then, yeah, sh she'll have to start actually teaching you but. yeah like um, I said, I, um um so 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 this like so this like pink stuff this is the explosive don't eat it well uh, well you know don't don't eat this one plastic explosive you can eat but don't eat this one yeah um, and then you put this thing in here uh -huh. and you run this wire and when and when electricity goes through it it blows up and kills everybody so so you plug it into the wall and it blows up well i mean well i mean it just needs an electrical source you need a battery oh cool man i, I um, appreciate uh, that um also make sure whenever you make something you wrap it in ball bearings all the time. 
And lots of tape. I, I oh, saw I saw okay. in a bunch of trids. It's always in tape too. Well, you know, I mean, the the uh, tape holds the ball bearings in. Duct tape helps. It's good. Also, also, if you put it in a pipe, the pipe turns into ball bearings. Hey, hey, Juliet. Hey, do you. I was just thinking, mm-hmm. you know, because improv is letting me build all the bombs now, because because you know I'm getting all smart like her. What if like you had some of those exploding bullets, and I put it on the outside of the bomb instead of these ball bearings? Because I don't care if it rolls real well, but if we put some of those exploding bullets you use on the outside, man, when this thing blows up, it'll set off all the exploding bullets. It'll be like a hundred shotguns went off too. I like it. Okay. I know what we doing this weekend. I mm. high fives to everybody that can reach you know eleven feet high for the high five. So no one. <laughs> <laughs> that's when Julia, that's when Julia kicks you in the nuts. And... <laughs> uh... Okay, so to uh, to make sure I understand what we're gonna do, our, we are going to have Juliet is going to place the big bomb because she's super sneaky. She placed the big bomb, which we didn't even ask. I don't think Juliet, are you okay with that plan? Yes, fine. If it means I can save ammo. Yep. So we well, like she's gonna have the easiest time getting underneath the fence because she's skinny. Uh, yeah. She she has she she been doing her Tybo or something lately. No, it's the limbo. Oh, is that is that like the karate one where you you break people's limbs off? No, it's like a dance. Man, you watch different videos than I do. Let's just, let's put it that way. All right. So anyway, Juliet's going to sneak in, go under the fence, hide the big bomb over at the office. Juliet gets away from it. Now, are we going to blow it and then try to find the stuff, or are we going to try to find the stuff and only blow the bomb if we need to? I think we want the bomb to go off that way because once we go through the fence, right, they're going to know something's up and they're not going to let us on the property. So the bomb will hopefully take out the rigger and a bunch of their other guards. And so should thereby weaken the op for. I like the sound of it. Does, does that jive with you guys? Yeah. Uh, Mr. GM, would you like me to roll for Kami? I believe it's availability four. No, you're fine. All right, then I will pick up three doses of Kami just in case. Cool. All right, well, if we're going to do this, we should uh, yeah. get started just because uh, it's getting a bit late. No, we, we just like to talk. All of us do. Yeah. <laughs> Truth comes out. Okay, so we will, uh, if we're ready to go, I believe we all have our battle rattle. We Alpha team is going to be going in the uh, pickup truck with Horatio, and we will call the Coyote, the, uh, excuse me, Coyote, over to take over how many of our gangers are we sending i think we had said six five or six sounds good to me yeah half a dozen sounds fine to me okay and uh, we're also sending the aries mule that i bought to help with the loading and the transporting okay so uh as we're getting ready to go we will call uh you said his name was charlie the uh the cojote yep you're just supposed to call him tell him a time and he'll meet you at a place so yeah you call him he tells you where to go when to meet him. Um, when you show up, there's an a, a, a Mary Indian man standing there, com- completely devoid of facial hair. He's got the stereotypical like leather headband, like around like uh, just above his eyebrows. His black hair is kind of spilling out over top of it. Uh, he's holding on to a very what appears to be a very nice crossbow, and behind him is a very nice truck. Like pickup truck or like a closed delivery truck? Instead of like the gopher, it's much more boxy versus rounded. The The panels are all off are all off at angles to, like, uh, to cause ricochets and stuff. Well, ricochets are more likely. The armor's a bit thicker. You have about a meter and a half of clearance underneath it. It has r- real big, thick off-road wheels uh, meant to uh, just dig and help climb. It's just a hoss of a truck, basically, of a vehicle. Instead of like a three or four person per, person cab, it, there's only room for two in it. Does it appear that it would be big enough to handle half a dozen of our guys, the Ares Mule, and as much drug precursors as we can load up? No. Yo, you must be Charlie, yeah? Mm. So uh, my man Coco Puff, he, uh, he hooked me up with your, your, your digits. Look, this is what we need. We need to get these boys, and he'll gesture to the six red wires, up into Snohomish along with this, and he'll gesture at the Aries mule. We're going to pick up some uh, some stuff. See, a friend of ours is moving, and uh, they don't need some of this stuff anymore in their house, so we're going to bring it back to our place. And we'd like to keep, you know, John Law, they would like to keep their nose out of it. You know how nosy they can get about things, yeah? Mm-hmm. Only problem is, now I'm not some kind of geologist who knows about measurements and stuff, but... 
I don't think your wheels are going to fit all my peeps. Mm -hmm. So you got some magic up your sleeve that's going to make that place bigger on the inside? Mm -hmm. He's just staring at you. like He hasn't even blinked this whole time. Mm -hmm. All right, now, uh, I hate to interrupt such a conversational gentleman, but you want to explain how you're going to get all my boys, the equipment, and all my friends' uh, boxes and knickknacks back in... He'll gesture at the truck. Mm -mm. He's going to... uh, lift his comm link up and, and, and just, just touch the home button, if you will, to turn on the screen so he has a screenshot of all his, his silly dogs playing. Because he has to remember you know, what, what he's doing this for. Yeah, what, what was the hellhound's name? Uh, Drogon. Yeah, Drogon's like breathing off the fire in the background. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, so you're saying you can take my boys, you can take this, you can get them across, pick up all the stuff we're going to pick up, and bring it back. And you're good at that. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is the important part. Are you going to freak out if I tell you there we might be, we we and he'll stop and <clears throat> we going to be bringing back some goats and some chickens too. Mm. He holds up a finger for like one and then points at himself. Well, I, I assumed you'd be coming back too. <laughs> he waves at you. He's like, like points at you, and then like puts both of his hands together, hands it out, and then points at. Pushes his hands out, points back at him. Are, are you you want to keep one of my goats and one of my chickens? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Mm. It, <laughs> Kenneth will literally throw his hands up and be like, "Man, can't, can't you just keep one of them?" And he'll gesture at at the, one of the red wires. And he'll look over, like give him, like he'll like lean around you, give them an appraising look. <sighs> I, 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 I. Now let's be clear. What what we coming back with might be a might set the thermometer up a little bit on the high side. If you understand what I mean. Mm-hmm. Hang on, my comlink's ringing. Hang on, Hor- Horatio, and he'll turn around and just look at Horatio. You're not selling my boys. It's fine. It's, it's called a negotiating tactic. Dang. <laughs> and he'll put his comlink away. I. Mm, how much we talking? And he'll rub his thumb and forefinger together. How, how many people are you bringing? Was it? Five with the mule. Is that what we said? Five plus the mule or six plus the mule? Five uh, plus the mule works. It's got to be both ways, though. Okay, so we got five plus the mule, and then on the way back, however many goats and chickens, and the additional supplies. So trip there and trip back total. He leans out, looks at all of them again, like p- puts his finger out, counts them, pulls out his comm link. <laughs> like, uh, like you can see, like, like a calculator function pop up on the screen. As he's putting it in, he turns it towards you. It says 2,000. Mm. 2,000 New Yen, there and back. All my people, my little horsey, all the gear, and as many goats and chickens as we can get. And you want a goat and a chicken for 2,000 New Yen. Mm-hmm. And he'll stand there, and he's doing the whole act where it looks like he's thinking really hard on it. And then he'll look back at everybody else and give them the half shrug. All right, we cool. Let's do this. Mm. And he, he literally just walks over, climbs up in this in this large truck, and he drives off. Just just drives off without like without looking at any of you, without without waiting for. Just drives off, and after did, did, probably three or four minutes. Does anybody? Did we even check to see if that that fragger speaks English? No, but I mean, I'm pretty sure he does. Otherwise, it'd be pretty hard to you know survive here. I guess we just wait. Okay. If, if 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 you don't know how to read English, you're probably going to get blown up. After like three or four minutes, he comes tearing back through. Like he's hauling. And out behind him is another large trailer. But it's similar to the other one, like the one that you guys actually saw them driving off with a gopher. But it's hooked to the back of this thing, and it's like it's an actual horse trailer. I guess that works. Yeah. All right, I, think, I think it's time to do what we're going to do, yeah? Seems like it. He leans out the window. Mm-hmm. And Kenna will transfer him half of the fee up front. So he'll send over a thousand new yen. And he'll, he'll give you a nod and wave at everybody else to, to, to get in. All right. So we got. Do, do, we, do any of you ride with him? Ride, like ride with everybody else or, or what? I, you know, I was thinking it might be good size wise. It might be good if Kennel did, if you guys are going to jump over a wall. I mean, my car's pretty, pretty tough. I'm sorry, Rabbit. What were you about to say about Juliet? Uh, I was wondering if he he wanted that. Uh, Kel wanted an extra guy on his side. That's all. 
I mean, I, honestly, I kind of, I kind of want us all to stick together. I'm just, I don't, I don't want to break your truck, man. It's looking real good these days. You think she can? No, make... no, don't worry about it. it. It's got the rollout bar now. Oh yeah, man, that's that's not sweet. That's cool. This, you know what? Ride or die. Let's do this together. Yeah, it came with a bunch of synth whiskey, but I threw that all out to replace it with purple slush. It's great. Ew. Okay. Horatio, I'm going to need a driving test for you. Or from you. This is for the ramp? Yep. Oh, and Mr. GM, on the way, would it have been possible to get some Halloween or Molotov cocktails? I believe they're availability four and 50 New Yen each. Sure. All right. Hey, everybody. Sarlacc here. My apologies for not getting an episode out to you last week. Uh, I have finally completed moving, which has been taking all of my time recently, and while not terribly far from my old house, changing homes when you live in Azatlan is much different than when I lived up north in the UCAS. Uh, the sound studio is almost reassembled, and the audio gear was finally discovered in a mislabeled box, so I should have the standard releases back on schedule. Uh, I just wanted to say that from all of us here at the Fourth Estate Militia, we, we really appreciate your taking time to listen to us have ridiculous amounts of fun. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week.